Hello everybody, one more time. My name is Alex Antena with Mercados Interactive Partners located in the Research Triangle area in North Carolina. Today we're gonna be taking a look at an awesome uh, tutorial and uh, basically it's um, how to manipulate images um, or photos uh, for advertising purposes, but um, how to manipulate them by separating their uh, contrast, their color, and their sharpening and by doing effectively by separating those three things then of course uh, we can uh, affect them more efficiently and effectively you can actually control better what you're doing so uh, before we do that let's take a look at our sponsor for today Mercados is a strategic web studio located in the research triangle area in North Carolina our focus is to help businesses of all sizes make more money through the use of strategic website design, custom digital media development, and web marketing. For more information, you can contact us at 888-525-8117 or visit us on the web at mercados.com. Mercados, creatively smart. All right, cool, here we are and I have the finished product, what we're gonna be taking a look at today on how to do. So I'm gonna show you here the original. So this is how the photo looked to begin with. And again, this photo is taken from Stock Exchange as always. So we appreciate that from them. And uh, we have the image here and we end up with something like this. And this of course is an image that is more, it has more sharpening, so it's sharper also has more control on the contrast and also of course has a lot more control on the color so you can see that all right so i'm gonna just delete everything that we have here and i'm going to walk you through uh, what we're going to be doing so channels all red green and blue import an image in here and then we're good to go so the first thing is we're going to be using a technique called the frequency separation uh, and I've been uh, just lately aware of that technique, but it seems like a lot of professional Photoshop users do that technique for uh, scheme retouching and things like that. But basically the concept of the technique is that we're going to duplicate the original layer twice. We're going to rename the first one low and the next one high. All right. Um, the low... Um, layer we're going to set with the Gaussian blur and uh, instead of doing that let me just go to the Gaussian blur settings so that I can show you more or less the settings so I'm using here a six percent uh, a six pixel Gaussian blur but basically the concept is that you want uh, the detail to be gone okay but uh, you want to be able to tell the difference in tones in values of the uh, of the image and that's happening for me in this particular image it's six pixels I'm using 8-bit uh, an 8-bit image and um, RGB of course so okay so that's the first part the second is uh, I'm gonna enable the high one change it to linear light and then I am going to go to the menu apply image in the apply image I'm gonna select the low layer as the source RGB is going to remain the same I'm going to invert that I'm going to change the blending mode to add and then scale of 2 and offset of 0 so let me just go ahead and hit OK and let me change this to normal so that you can see what this image looks like so basically this image looks like this so you have all the detail from this image and in this image the low you have a blurry copy the interesting thing is that when this one is set to linear light both of them combined end up with pretty much the same result as the original although it's a little bit different it's not exactly right it's close enough all right so that's kind of the purpose and if you're thinking already uh, what I thought at first the high pass filter would give you something similar is not exactly the same so 
Very cool. Let's go to high first and here, and I'm just gonna click Command Shift U to get rid of like the color information that we still had in that layer. And uh, let's go ahead and change it to linear line. All right, cool. So basically what that means is that we have now effectively separated our detail from our color in the bottom. So that's the first thing. So here at the top, I am going to use this to increase the sharpening. And to do that, I'm going to add an adjustment layer of levels. Of course, you can do it with curves as well. And we have several tutorials on how to use uh, curves uh, for more control other than levels. In this case, since it's almost a very automated thing, then I'm going to be using uh, just the, the uh, levels pane. So here, I'm going to set this to 30. And I'm going to reduce this by the same amount, so 225, right? So basically, I'm increasing here from 0 to 30 and decreasing here from 255 to 225, same amount. So the center stays in the same place. And I'm going to hit OK. You can uh, play with those settings also. You can make them uh, higher if you think that you're not getting enough sharpening. But as you can see here, I'm getting plenty of sharpening. In fact, I can also play with the opacity to increase or reduce the sharpening effect. Also, I have a mask, of course, because this is an adjustment layer. So I can take my brush with black, and I'm going to use an opacity of, like, let's say 70% or so. And I can come here and get rid of, like, the sharpening in the sections of the image that really don't need to be sharpened. For example, the background. Um, there are other techniques, and we have other videos that show um, how to control a little bit the sharpening. But um, just for the purpose of this one, we're just going to leave it like this. So I'm just, with that, creating a mask. That reduces the, um, the sharpening in the background here so that you're not increasing the noise in that background. And the sharpening is just happening here. All right, great. Let's go ahead and rename this sharpening. So that one's happening at the top, but right now it's sharpening also my, my color and contrast. So let's go ahead and create this into a clipping mask. So now it's only affecting the high one here. All right, great. Now what we're going to do is between that low and high, we're going to create our uh, contrast layers. So I'm going to create solid color, get a 50% gray layer there, hit OK. I'm going to rasterize this one. So now it's rasterized, and what I'm going to do is using my burning and dodging, burn midtones exposure at 50%. I can affect, and to actually see what's happening with the image, I'm going to change the blending mode to overlay. So I'm going to call this one contrast. And uh, if you can see, as I affect with the burning tool, I'm painting not on the mask, I'm painting, I'm burning inside of my burn, uh, my 50% gray. And what I'm doing is increasing uh, the contrast locally. Of course, I'm not going to do it generally because uh, it's just better to control what parts should be darker in the image and what parts should be uh, lighter. So as you can see, that's basically the technique. I'm, I'm just increasing the, the uh, decreasing the value in the darker tones right now. So I'm pretty much just burning middles. As you can see, mid-tones. There you go. So basically that's increasing that. Great. And of course, if you need to make the background a little bit darker, then you can do that and so forth. Great. Same thing with dodging, except it, of course it's the opposite. I'm lightening. So as you can see, I'm selecting now dodging, mid-tones mid exposure 50%. Now I can just like play with the parts that I think that should be lighter. To make this like more contrasty. And again, these are affecting things locally. So of course I have like tons of control as opposed to doing just contrasts uh, that are general.
great stuff. So as you can see, this looks amazing already, man. It looks beautiful. All right, so that's cool. That's the contrast layer. And then what we're gonna do is affect the color and we're gonna affect the color without touching the detail. So we're gonna also do it in between the high and low here. And I'm gonna do that with a LUT. So color lookup adjustment layer and change it to whatever you want. I'm gonna show you several effects, uh, but I'm gonna show you the one that I promised first. So late sunset. And there you go, there you have it. The final result is just looks amazing with that LUT right there just affecting the color tones as opposed to the whole thing. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other LUTs that are here. So that's two strip, three strip, really nice poppy colors there. There's a ble bleach bypass, candle light. That one looks pretty cool too. Crisp, warm, and you can play of course with the different ones depending on the effect that you're after. Um, this is more color toning um, as opposed to color correcting. Uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna leave it with late sunset, which is the original one that we want. Uh, let's call this one color adjustment. Great, so we end up with the original low contrast color adjustment high and then sharpening at the very top. Let me go ahead and copy this one at the very top so we can see before and after. So original, before, after, before, after, one more time, before, and after. As you can see, it's just pretty much amazing. I mean, it looks incredible. It really, really uh, changes the, the whole concept of the image, the whole concept of the photo. It gives a lot more information about, um, or it frames much better the subject. It tells you a, a little bit more of a story than the original image, which was a great image, but um, I, again, it doesn't send as much communication as this one does. And uh, as you can see, man, this, this image looks fantastic. So anyways, that's a, cu uh, a quick technique to show you the separation of sharpening um, of contrast and of color. So if you can control those things separately, you can control the image in a better fashion um, than doing the whole thing in a, in a general fashion. So we can control contrast in certain areas of the photo. We can control sharpening. Uh, we can say, well, we don't want sharpening in the midtones. We only want them in certain parts of the subject, for example. And then of course, color, we could actually play around and do all sorts of things, um, which I only showed you one adjustment, which is the, uh, the LUT. But you can do all sorts of things. For example, one of the ones that I always play with is Vibrance. So you can reduce the saturation and increase, increase the vibrance. And it gives like this kind of interesting vibe to, to the images. Or you can do the opposite, decrease the vibrance and increase the saturation. Or you can increase both, make that image like look like, man, it's coming out of the screen. So things like that. And uh, if you actually put it right where we talked about, right in between the high and low, then all that you're affecting with those changes are the color and the contrast, the general contrast. You're not affecting the micro contrast or the sharpening, which of course makes it cleaner in the end. So hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any questions or comments, just let me know in the YouTube comments box. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.